Okay, welcome back. Let's talk a little bit about the internal structures of the heart and the development of the heart. So first we're looking at this uh, animation of the blood flow of the heart in the adult uh, situation after birth. We can see the vena cava supplying the right atrium. We have that typical blood flow to the lungs, back to the left atrium, out the left ventricle to the arch of the aorta, through the rest of the body. Uh, but in utero, blood flow is different because it's being received from the mother through the placenta. The lungs are not oxygenating blood in utero, of course. So in this case, we have the placenta supplying oxygenated blood through the, uh, 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 the um, hepatic vein. The hepatic vein traveling through the mother's uh, uh, placenta to the umbilicus, uh, of the of the uh, uterus of the uh, embryo, uh, following through the liver, uh, so the umbilical vein is supplying all this oxygenated blood that eventually passes into the inferior vena cava, which mixes with uh, some of the uh, kind of passive blood flow that's traveling through uh, the uh, superior vena cava. So that will mix, uh, and what we have here is the septum that's separating the two uh, atria of the heart is not fully formed. So blood is able to pass from the right atrium to the left atrium, uh, and then to the ventricle uh, to the arch of the aorta and the rest of the body. So in this way, it bypasses uh, flow to the right ventricle. And this is desired because the lungs are forming, and as the lungs are forming, they uh, are, will be damaged from pressur pressurization of blood from the right ventricle. So by bypassing the right ventricle, we allow the, uh, the uh, lungs to develop fully. Furthermore, we see a new little structure that we don't see in the adult. Actually, it, it degenerates in the adult. So this little structure is called the ductus arteriosum. Ductus arteriosum is another way that the lungs are bypassed as blood, uh, you know, kind of passively flows into the, the pulmonary arteries. It can bypass the lungs by traveling through ductus arteriosum directly into the uh, de descending aorta. So ductus arteriosum, going back to look at the adult, so take a focus on that ductus arteriosum right now. I'm going to go back to the adult. That degenerates closes off and becomes ligamentum arteriosum in the adult after birth, and this blood flow pattern has changed. So back to the in utero condition. So the thing is that during development, the different cushions, uh, uh, the septums that form between the, uh, the, the chambers of the heart uh, have to develop. The heart develops as a one large chamber curves around in on itself and these septa begin to form. The way that blood passes from the right atrium to the left atrium in utero is from a foramen uh, between those atria uh, in this septum called the foramen ovale of the heart. Foramen ovale of the heart uh, ends up uh, closing, so the foramen ovale is actually two separate layers of the septum. And when the blood flow changes, those layers uh, crash down on top of each other and fuse, causing that foramen to close and be renamed fossa ovalis. <clears throat> so uh, there we see fossa ovalis within the right atrium. And that uh, fossa ovalis uh, doesn't completely close or completely form in about a quarter of the population. Uh, normally, for, for almost all of the people with a patent foramen ovale of the heart, uh, it results in no or very little clinically significant effects. Um, but there are some cases where that uh, foramen ovale uh, is so poorly formed that it does result in cyanosis uh, or poor blood flow, lack of oxygenation of the blood. And so that is a condition in which uh, surgery has to be performed in order to close off that foramen. 
So normally, uh, we can see this normal heart developed with the, uh, the septa between all of the chambers. Uh, and with an ultrasound, uh, that can be placed at the apex of the heart, uh, just projecting up into the thorax from the abdomen. We can actually see, so this is where the probe is, um, below the xiphoid process, projecting up into the apex to the base of the heart. We can see the interventricular septa, the interatrial septa, and the valves, the atrioventricular valves of the heart. So that's what a normal heart looks like. But these endocardial cushions, the septa, can uh, form poorly or not form at all. And when that happens, then we, that can be visualized uh, with ultrasound very easily. <clears throat> and so again, this is a condition that uh, should be corrected via surgery, if possible, uh, immediately after birth, uh, usually. Uh, so this is called an endocardial cushion defect. So now let's take a look at a more anatomically accurate drawing of the heart. So this is the anatomical orientation of the heart. We have the apex uh, going off to the left, the base of the heart with the great veins above. Uh, we can see the inferior vena cava, um, below, superior vena cava, above. In dissection, the tip to orienting yourself to the anatomical uh, orientation of the heart is uh, fairly simple. The heart can look confusing because uh, it's all pink. It's not going to have a nice red colored aortic arch and a blue colored vena cava. It's going to be pink and uh, it's going to be covered in fat. And so the tip is to take your left thumb and stick it up into the inferior vena cava. And you have to make that mm, noise when you do it because, it, I, I don't know, uh, it's fun that way. So when you do that, then expand your, your hand flat out. And in that way, the heart will rest in the anatomical position in your hand like, like so. And the apex will be heading out toward... Uh, your uh, ring finger, perhaps, the base will be up. So find that inferior vena cava first and uh, perform that maneuver. Uh, so here we have the anterior anatomical view of the heart. We can see the right atria and the left atria, the little oracles of the atria sticking out from the atria. The oracle is just like the flappy ear of the atria. We can see the right ventricle and the left ventricle separated by the anterior interventricular sulcus with the anterior interventricular artery uh, within it. Now let's take a posterior view of the heart. Now we can see the pulmonary veins and the pulmonary arteries. Pulmonary arteries traveling away from the heart to the lungs to oxygenate the blood in them. Pulmonary veins traveling into the left atrium uh, with oxygenated blood. On this posterior view, we can clearly see inferior vena cava. We can also see the coronary sinus. Coronary sinus is a very thin and very delicate structure. And when you're dissecting, it is very easy to tear it open and lose track of it. Uh, because the heart is likely going to be covered in uh, fat, pericardial fat, over the endocardial um, uh, uh, the myocytes, uh, the, the cardiomyocytes. So as you are using blunt dissection with tweezers uh, or whatnot to pick away the fat from the surface, be very careful in the coronary sulcus that you do not tear open the coronary sinus because then it will make it more difficult to find the veins. Just a pro tip there. <clears throat> Now let's go inside the heart and look at the structures inside the atria and ventricles. First, the right uh, ventricle. We see <clears throat> that the muscular wall of the ventricles is called uh, trabeculae carnae. Trabeculae carnae is this interwoven net-like structure of the uh, cardiomyocytes, the cardiac muscle tissue. There are a few muscular processes that extend off of the wall, and these muscular processes are called papillary muscles. Papillary muscles, you'll know them because they attach to the uh, valves, the cusps of the valves, via chordae tendini. Very uh, 
the small but tough uh, cords, heart cords, that connect the cusps to the wall of the heart, to these papillary muscles. So you'll be able to pull on somebody's heartstrings in the dissection in this way. Uh -huh. uh, so the, um, of course, with this musculature, we need innervation. And the innervation for these papillary muscles is through something that looks very much like a papillary muscle, but heading perpendicular to them, horizontally, called the tr um, moderator band or the septomarginal trabeculae. Septomarginal trabeculae, because it is traveling from the septum uh, along the mar to the marginal wall of the heart, and it looks like trabecular muscle. Uh, but it's extending out and connecting directly to the papillary muscles. That moderator band contains the specialized uh, Purkinje fibers of the heart, which are the uh, electrically active uh, uh, nerves of the heart, uh, which convey the action potential. So I, I have trouble describing that because these are not actual uh, neural cells. These are actually specialized uh, cardiomyocytes, which have become specialized to conduct the action potential called Purkinje fibers. Purkinje cells of the heart. Uh, so moving on, let's look at the atrium, in, in particular the right atrium. Here again we can see the fossa ovalis, which is that closed off uh, foramen ovalis from, uh, from uh, the in, in utero portion. We can see uh, the smooth wall of the atrium giving away to the oracle of the atrium, which has pectinate muscle within it. The pectinate muscle is, is much like the trabeculae carni, but it's located in the atria. So if you see this network of muscular looking fibers in the atrium, it's called pectinate muscle. If it's in the ventricles, it's called trabeculae carni. Uh, what else to say about this? So when you're looking in the atria, be sure you identify the valves as well. Um, so, uh, well, there we have it. That is the, uh, that's all I care to say about the atrium. So let's move on and look at this electrical conduction of the nodes uh, and how they travel through the heart. Of course, we have the SA node in the right atrium. We have the AV node at the base of the uh, right atrium, and it sends the bundle of hiss, uh, the and atrioventricular bundle into the interventricular septum. Uh, that interventricular uh, uh, bundle is going to supply the right and left ventricles, uh, as well as the moderator band to the pectinate muscles. So what's the point of the pectinate muscles? They're not there to open the valves. In fact, the pressure of the contraction of the atria or ventricles is what opens the valves. But if the, for instance, the right ventricle uh, contracts, it's going to push blood up, but how does that blood know which valve to travel through? How does it know to travel through the pulmonary valve and not um, back through the right atrioventricular valve? Well, that's what the pectinate muscle does. They prevent prolapse of the right atrioventricular valve and the backflow of blood into the right atrium. So as the right atrium or the left atrium, if you want the analogous situation, as the, atri as the ventricle contracts, uh, that, uh, that moderator band sends that action potential to the pectinate muscle to cause them to contract and pull that valve so the valve doesn't fly back up into the right atrium at the same time that the right ventricle is contracting. So that's the purpose, is to prevent backflow. So here this slide looks complicated. Uh, this is just for your information only. This is not testable material, but you need to understand that those, the SA node and the AV node are controlled by the autonomic nervous system. Vagus nerve, through the dorsal motor nucleus of vagus nerve, is sending fibers uh, down to the heart to um, 
stimulate and slow down the activity in these nodes, whereas the um, portions of the sympathetic nervous system from the thoracic trunk are going to speed up uh, those processes, um, the, the electrical activity of those regions. And so this little animation here kind of gives you an interesting idea about how those nodes propagate the uh, electrical signal and the corresponding electrocardiogram trace uh, that results. So you can correlate from this animation, you'll get this in physics, I'm not going to test you on these wave patterns uh, in, in physiology, uh, but um, you know, those processes you kind of get to correlate via this animation. Okay, so that's all I've got for this uh, lecture. Thanks for listening.